Now we come to the occipital bone, which in this disarticulated skull is going to be the bone that you find at the back of the head. If you take off the parietal bone from the top of the cranium and look into the skull, you can see the into the interior of the floor of the cranium, and here you find the occipital bone. It is bordered by the sphenoid bone and two temporal bones on either side. One of the most obvious features that this bone has is this large, very important opening, which is referred to very appropriately as the foramen magnum. And the phrase foramen magnum simply means large opening or great opening. Also, what you can not see very well, but which is present if you look at the interior of the frame and magnum, you'll find in the walls that form the frame and magnum, you'll find an opening that becomes a canal through which the 12th cranial nerve goes on its way to the tongue, to innervate the tongue. And the nerve is called the hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve number 12. And you can see here that it's going to go some distance through the wall on its way to the tongue. So that's the hypoglossal canal. Another thing you can see here is the part of the occipital bone which is going to contribute to the jugular foramen. There is a notch here which together with a fossa, which is found on the temporal bone, is going to form the jugular foramen. It is a little bit subtle here in this particular plastic skull. But if we take a look at this skull, which is an actual skull, uh, this is a picture that I got from the internet through a Creative Commons license. But if you look at this interior view of the skull in this excellent photo, you can see that the jugular notch is very deep and distinct in this particular specimen. And if you look at this figure, which comes from Gray's Anatomy, the 1918 edition, again through a Creative Commons license, you can again see the frame and magnum, very obvious, and the jugular foramina on either side. Here is a look at the occipital bone isolated in this figure. You can see very clearly why it's called the jugular notch in, in, in this view. Here is a, another view of the uh, jugular foramen from an oblique view. And this is the plastic skull. But this also gives you another view of the hypoglossal canal. This is a look at the exterior of the occipital bone. There are some features to note here. One that you can easily feel on the back of your head is what is referred to as the external occipital protuberance. Even if you have a female skull, it's a noticeable bump that you find on the back of the skull. Some other features which tend to be a little more subtle are lines. And these lines are referred to as nuchal lines. Nuca refers to the nape of the neck. And so we can see in this particular specimen, we can see on either side of the external occipital protuberance, we can see the superior nuchal lines. There are also inferior nuchal lines, which you can see on this uh, specimen. But if we look at a figure from Gray's Anatomy again, we can see these features clearly delineated in this drawing. Again, we have the external occipital protuberance. We have on either side, we have superior nuchal line. We have the inferior nuchal line. And there are other lines that you can see here that are illustrated, like this, the upper nuchal line and the median nuchal line, which tend to be somewhat subtle. Lines, generally speaking, are features that sometimes can be very subtle, particularly in skeletons where features are not as robust as they might be otherwise, in, let us say, the more, uh, the more rugged skeleton, if you will. You can also see very nicely in this figure what are called the occipital condyles. These are processes which are going to form a movable articulation with the first cervical vertebra, the atlas. So the occipital condyles are going to form the atlanto-occipital joint, which is a movable joint. And because this is a movable joint, the condyle is going to have a smooth surface, which represents 
the surface on which you would have you would have found hyaline cartilage in the living skull. Here again are the jugular notches, which you can see very nicely in this figure. Also behind the condyles, there are openings which lead to what are called the condylar canals. Now, if we take a look at an inferior view of the plastic skull and look closely at the occipital bone, again, we can see the occipital condyles, but if you look closely, you will not find the condylar canals. And so what does this mean? Is this a mistake? Well, actually, this is a feature that you may find or you may not find. So this is another example of variability where in some skulls you find condylar canals, but in other skulls you don't. So again, if you would like to take a quiz, there is a link to a quiz below in the description. And here is a, a list of the image attributions and the links to these images. The original images are found below also.